Welcome to Real Talk Real Women. My name is Miriam Kalari and today we have Jill Redison from Venice, California on the show. So first Hello. of all, I heard you a little bit crazy. That's a, does that sound about right? <laughs> uh, depending who you ask, I'm sure. What's your, secret? What's your secret? Uh, to being crazy? Uh, I don't know, be bold. Uh, just kidding. Welcome on the show, Jill. Thank you. <laughs> how are you? I'm good. Yeah. Tell us how, how do you go from drinking strawberry vodka and eating Taco Bell at 3.30 a.m. to being an athlete, IBB pro athlete? It's been a long time coming. Um, you know, back in the days of like the binge drinking and the Taco Bell drive throughs at 4 a.m. and just, you know, really unhealthy life habits. Um, that primarily, that was primarily when I was a young adult, uh, definitely throughout college. Um, and then after college in like my early 20s. And then, you know, I had always gone to the gym and I had always worked out. But then it would, it would almost be like I would undo everything with my lifestyle habits and the eating and the drinking. Um, and one day I was at the gym and I was training with some friends. And my trainer, uh, you know, she put on a bodybuilding show every year. And I didn't know anything about that world. And she goes, well, you know you have a pretty good physique and a pretty good structure. I think, I think you would do well. And I was like, ah, I, I, no, I'm not a pageant girl. Like, no. And she was like, oh, whatever. You're scared. And I said, I'm not scared. And she goes, oh, whatever. You're scared. I, I dare you. And I was like, whatever. And she goes, well, I double dog dare you. And I was like, okay. The double dog dare. The coveted double dog dare. Now I have to do it. So I did the show. And I, I did like, I think I took 16 weeks to prep for that show. And 16 weeks later, I was coiffed up and done up and tanned up and ripped up. And I did my first figure show. And uh, then that was back in 2003. And uh, then, you know, it's been now 10 years since my first show. Um, and it took me nine years to get a pro card. So it was a long road. Wow, so amazing. Fair. Yeah, yeah. It, but it's awesome. I mean, you know, they say that, you know, life's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And that's truly what this has become. Because um, I think definitely if I would have gotten it quickly, it probably wouldn't have meant nearly as much. So, Looking back, is there one specific moment where you decided to turn things around for yourself? Um, you know, I think there was a few moments that kind of led me to ultimately decide that I really wanted to change the way I live my life and my lifestyle and just I wanted to make more uh, intelligent, smarter, healthy decisions for myself. Um, you know, I, there was a couple instances that were results of uh, drinking a little too much uh, on a couple occasions where, you know, I found myself just, you know, in the throngs of the after effects of drinking and feeling miserable and probably, you know, in between puking. Um, and just, I was just not, you know, it, it, not in a good position. And it just got to the point where I was like, why am I doing this? You know, I mean, I get one body and why am I treating it this way? And, um, and it's kind of funny because just since I just started to start leading a healthier lifestyle, I like to say I'm reverse aging. I'm like counting down to my 20th <laughs> reunion for high school. Um, because I actually feel like, I mean, I feel better than I did when I was younger. And I feel like I look better. So, you know, it, getting healthy has a lot of benefits. Let's just put it that way. So. I, I agree. <laughs> I, I encourage everybody to try it. Tell us about how Maria Bellando challenged you to compete. Uh, well, we were in the gym and we were doing legs one day. And uh, my old trainer and friend, Maria Bellando, who's, uh, she herself is an IFBB fitness pro. Um, you know, that's the, the day that she said, Hey, you know, I'm doing the Southern States bodybuilding show. It's a great show. You know, you, you should try competing in it. And, you know, that's, and I laughed at her and I was just like, no, it's not for me. No, thanks. I'm not interested. And, and, you know, and then, and then she started taunting me and saying that I was scared and why wouldn't I try it? And I was chicken. And, and then from that came the dare. And then from that came the double dare. And then from that came the acceptance of the dare and, you know, the rest is history, so. Great. <laughs> yeah. Now you've earned your pro card. How is this different from competing early in your career? What does it take to be a pro? Um, you know, when I, when I went from amateur to pro, everybody asked me the same question, which was, what does it feel like to be a pro? Uh, 
it kind of feels the exact same way it does to be an amateur in the sense of, you know, you're still, you're still not the best of the best. You're not the cream of the crop. There's still a road ahead of you. Um, you know, the only difference is now I think it's like there's more pressure. Um, and I have to work a little harder. Well, actually, I don't have to work a little harder. I have to work a lot harder um, because now I'm standing shoulder to shoulder with, you know, the best girls in the women's physique division. Um, and, you know, and, and it's a great category and it's only going to boom and get bigger. So it's, it's a little, it's, it's more pressure, but, uh, but I love it. I thrive under pressure. Um, you know, I've worked real hard to get here, so I'm not going to complain at all about where I'm at or my situation because this is what I wanted and I got it. So, um, but it's, it's cool. I mean, I, I'm excited about it. I'm, I'm a lot more excited, I guess, than I was to be an amateur because when I was an amateur, I was, you know, you just want that pro card and you're frustrated and you just want that card. And now that you have the card, you can actually focus on just really paying attention to yourself and your training and being the best that you can possibly be because you already have that card. Now it's just a matter of really putting yourself to work and shining on stage when you have the opportunity. Um, so that's the big difference between being amateur and pro. I think I'm a little more, I'm a little more excited now. Um, and then, uh, you know, I, I don't know. It's just I, I'm making my pro debut in five weeks, so I'm really excited about that. Um, and I'm just, I'm just real stoked to see what this year is going to bring because now that they've opened – the physique division to they've opened the physique division up in uh in the Olympia competition. So now us physique girls, you know, we actually have a shot at competing on the Olympia stage, which, you know, before they announced that they were gonna integrate it into 2013, they only had um bodybuilding figure and the recent introduction of bikini. So now now physique is in there too. So, you know, I mean, it was cool to think that you could turn pro. And then it was cool to think that you could compete as a pro, but it's even cooler to know now that you can maybe even compete on an Olympia stage and have an Olympia title, which is, like, awesome. That's, like, the holy grail. Amazing, so, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know that one of your goals on your vision board is to win the Olympia. How important has goal setting been in your career, and what is your approach to achieving big goals? I think setting goals and, and writing them down on something, on a vision board, on a piece of paper, on a message in a bottle that you throw in the ocean, whatever, I think it's really important to write things down because you can think these thoughts all you want, you can dwell on it, but until you actually put a pen to paper or put a finger to a key and extract that thought outward into the universe, nothing's going to happen. Um, a few years ago, I, I moved... I moved a number of times after I moved to California. I probably moved like, I don't know, like eight or 10 times. Stupid amount. Um, and when I moved here, you know, I mean, every time I moved, you, you unearth new stuff. And one of the last, well, it was probably like four moves ago, um, I was cleaning out my stuff and I found a piece of paper. And on the piece of paper, I had drawn uh, two lines intersecting and it had four, you know, like four boxes. And I had written in each box goals at that particular point in my life. And it was really cool because when I found the paper years later, three of the four goals had come to fruition. So I think it's really important to write goals, to set goals, to have goals. Um, you know, they don't have to be for like tomorrow, next week. I mean, it could be for like 10 years from now, at some point in your life, whatever. But it's important to, to, to say what you want and to put it out there because the universe will give you what you ask for. Um, the harm is just in not asking. So definitely, you know, have goals. One of my goals is to compete in the Olympia. You know, a goal even beyond that is to win the Olympia one day. Um, you know, and, I'm, and I know at some point in my life I'll do it. It might not be this week. It might not be this year. It might not be this decade, whatever. But I'm a stubborn, stubborn girl, and I will go after what I want hard. And that's something I want. And I have written it down, so that means it's going to happen. <laughs> Amazing. Great. <laughs> I read an interview where you said that you want to make bodybuilding cool again. What do you mean by that? Well, bodybuilding is a very niche sport. And bodybuilding, you know, unfortunately at times can have a negative connotation attached to it. Or if you mention it to people, you know, some people are just turned off by it or they just 
you know, or they're grossed out or they're just, it's just not their cup of tea. And bodybuilding is, has not been portrayed in a positive light in a number of years. I mean, way back in the day, back in the twenties and thirties when, you know, bodybuilding was apparent on the boardwalk down in Venice beach, you know, like the old muscle beach, like, you know, I mean, that was when it was in its heyday and it was, and it was cool and it was different and people were impressed by it. And, you know, regardless of whether you really liked it or not, you could at least appreciate it. And, you know, bodybuilding's just kind of undergone numerous changes over the years from being in its heyday back on the boardwalk, you know, way back when to, you know, the seventies when, when Arnold was here and everybody was pumping iron and, you know, and then when that movie came out, um, you know, and then, back in like the 80s and the 90s where it really had its heyday in the media. Um, and then there was just like a decline. And now I think recently, like within recent years, you're starting to see a new and emerged reinterest in the world of bodybuilding. I don't necessarily know, know why. I don't know if it's because the other sports such as like wrestling and MMA um, have become increasingly more popular. So just, you know, bodybuilding just, you know, we're like a neighboring sport or like people have crossed over. So that's, that's definitely helped it out. Um, regardless, awareness is good. So even, you know, I, it's great to see the sport growing with the, you know, with the recent additions of the bikini divisions and the men's and women's physique divisions, you know, they're opening, they're opening competitive bodybuilding up to entirely new groups of people that n- wouldn't necessarily have access or even think you know, that, that would be something that would be considered bodybuilding. So it's really cool. Cause they're, you know, they're trying to make it a little more for everybody and just kind of broaden it up a bit. And, and that's really great. And it's great for the sport. And, uh, you know, I want to help make it cool again. You know, I've always loved lifting weights. Um, you know, I've always been a big fan of strong female personalities, female superheroes, you know, gorgeous ladies of wrestling back from like the eighties, um, you know, all that stuff. It, you know, it's, it's cool. So if I can be a part of that and be, you know, part of this like emergence of change to make bodybuilding cool again and, you know, show that women can lift weights and still be feminine and still, you know, be pretty and not be, you know, super gnarled out. Fantastic. I'm all for it, you know? So, I'm excited about that. And then there's a, there's the new generation iron movie that's coming out this year, right before the Olympia. Um, and then also, uh, there's a new Dwayne, uh, rock Johnson movie, pain and gain, which was filmed actually in my hometown of Miami. Mm -hmm. Um, that's coming out. So, I mean, you're going to start seeing more, you know, more and more people kind of making bodybuilding like a pop culture thing. So just wait, that's my prediction. So, and if I can be a part of that, fantastic. A lot of people look at you in the, in the magazines and ask, what is she taking? They don't realize that you're putting many years of hard work, what you've accomplished today. What would you say to those people? It's taken a long time to get here. <laughs> um, you know, it, it, it's a long road. And I mean, it's, it's a lot of work. I mean, I spend hours in the gym every day. Um, you know, I do two cardio sessions a day. And then I do like a, you know, an hour, a little, little over an hour of weights a day where I'll focus on one to two body groups. Um, I usually do about half an hour of abs. You know, I'm, you know, I'm in the gym a lot. Um, and it's, it takes a lot to get here. It's not just being in the gym. It's also eating clean and eating at, you know, the right times and making sure I get sleep and taking glutamine and taking, um, L-carnitine and taking, I don't know, what else do I have behind me? I have all sorts of stuff. I have my glutamine, my L-carnitine. I have my greens. I have a barrage of protein powders. Um, my MCT oil. That stuff's good. Um, my Mrs. Bragg's apple cider vin- vinegar, my glutamine, you know, it's, it's all a process. Um, so to those people that, you know, want to know what I'm taking, That's what I'm taking. A lot of clean food, a lot of exercise, a lot of cardio, a lot of sleep, um, you know, and massage. Massage is good too. I highly advise body work. On top of all the hard work, you also had some pretty serious setbacks. Going into a competition with an elbow infection and almost losing your arm, knee problems, etc. How do you deal with hardship like like these? 
Um, well, t- almost two years ago, before the USA's, I caught a staph infection, and that's when I, you know, I got an, the staph infection in my elbow, um, which unfortunately spread rapidly all the way down to my hand, and then all the way up to the top of my shoulder. Um, and thankfully, we caught it um, in time. My doctor, thankfully, was able to catch it pretty much a day before I needed hospitalization. Um, and then it was even advised, I was even advised at that time not to lift and to just basically go home and sit in bed and not move and be very still because when you have staff, it can spread with movement. Um, so that was really tough. So, I mean, against my doctor's better advice, I did start working out, um, you know, a few weeks later and I just trudged on. And then even with my knee, I've had a bum knee since I, since I was a kid. Um, I've had a bad left knee. And that, that's always been a real thorn in my side through my training. Um, but, you know, you just you kind of push through it. Like, um, I probably don't take care of it to the degree that I should in terms of icing and elevating it. Um, but, you know, it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, you're going to have hiccups along the way. You're going to have speed bumps. Everybody has parts of their bodies that are not 100% or are not up to the capacity in which it should be when you're an athlete and you train at this intense of a level, but you just push through it. You know, you just push through the pain, you, you embrace it and you just move forward and just know that, you know, it's as long as you're not doing anything that's going to, you know, bring on further injury. Um, and as long as you treat, you know, your injuries as needed when they happen, you know, you're fine. But, you know, my knee, I put a, I wrap it up with a brace and I go or, you know, I ice and elevate it on the days that I need to do so. But it's just, it's just one of those things. I mean, unfortunately, I'll never, I'll never be able to be a, an MMA fighter because uh, I have a bad knee. So uh, I'm bodybuilding instead. So there we go. How important are the people around you when it comes to your success today? Um, I think it's really important to have a good circle of friends and family or support system when you're training, uh, you know, when you're training for anything, um, any athlete knows like it's really important to have a good inner circle of friends that you can depend on, um, when you're getting ready for something, just, you know, to be there, to be supportive mentally, physically, you know, I know, I, you know, when I'm prepping for a show, I have my moments where I turn into a beast and sometimes I'm so disgusted by my own attitude and behavior. I don't even want to be around myself. So it's really important to have those friends that'll kind of, you know, A, put up with you, B, keep you grounded, and C, be able to call you out and tell you when you're being a jerk um, and to change your attitude. So, you know, it, it's really, I think it's really important. And I have, luckily for me, I've been very lucky to have a really good core group of people. Um, my coach, Chris Cormier, is like, he's like my best friend. You know, I jokingly call him Uncle Chris because he really is, um, You know, my friend Joanne Lee, she's a bodybuilding pro. Um, she's amazing. You know, I always love going to her and just like verbally spewing on her because she was a competitor herself. She knows what it feels like. You know, I think it's really important also as a competitor to have a friend maybe that's in that same sport or at least that trains at the same level that you do, even if it's not in the same sport, who can just understand your lifestyle and your sacrifices and won't give you, you know, won't give you too much crap when you pull out of going in the movies with everybody because you're tired because you did two hours of cardio or, you know, your friends won't tease you too badly about not going out with them because, you know, you have to wake up at six in the morning, you know, to lift or whatever. Um, so it's really important also to have an understanding group of friends because not a lot of people understand this lifestyle and it, it is a very lonely, solitary, you know, <laughs> quiet lifestyle. But, uh, but having a support system is key because, you know, I mean, if, if you can do it and you have the belief of the, you know, the people that mean the most to you in your corner, then you're capable of doing anything. Yeah, I agree. Looking back, what is the one accomplishment you're most proud of? The one accomplishment I'm most proud of, um, well, I would say as in, you know, as in recent, recent years, winning my pro card at the North Americans, uh, this past, past August, just because that had been, you know, such a fantastic story, you know, like storybook fairy tale ending to such a long road and such a long 
time of desiring it. Um, so when I actually won it, it was so surreal. It was like, you know, I remember going back to the hotel that day and thinking like, man, this is so awesome. And it totally sucks that this day is going by so fast <laughs> and tomorrow's just going to be like, Oh, okay. But, um, I think, I think that was really cool. And it was, it, that was really special for me because I was able to have my parents there. And when I first, first came home to my parents back in like 2003 and said, I'm going to compete in a bodybuilding show. They were like, what? <laughs> and then, you know, but they supported me and they said, all right, we don't really understand it, but we'll support you because we love you. Um, so I thought it was really cool for me to see them there, like there in the front and see me actually go pro, you know, to, to witness that and kind of solidify to themselves like, okay, so this whole bodybuilding thing, you know, wasn't too crazy, I guess, because here she is going pro. That's cool. Um, so that was really special for me to show my parents that, you know, I, I can achieve something in this nutty world of bodybuilding. So, and it was also in Pittsburgh, which is my dad's hometown. So that was even more special. So that was, that was a very proud moment. And, uh, you know, and I, and I had Chris there too. And literally, like, literally we were jumping around and spinning around backstage, like little kids and we were crying. Like it was just, it was very special. And I was very proud of that moment and to have earned that and, and have the people that meant most to me there to witness it. So it was cool. Great. Congratulations again on your pro card. <laughs> Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thanks. Me and my husband will be in Vegas in September. Are we going to see you win the Olympia? I'll say yes. Why not? It's Vegas. Anything is possible in Vegas, right? So. Okay, deal. I, I'm going to say yes. Sure. Deal. I'm going to the Olympia. Let's go for that. Okay. Great. I haven't qualified yet, but I will. So watch that. And I'm, I'm putting it out there in the universe. So now it's going to happen. What's the best place for people to connect with you online? Um, I'm a Twitter girl. I like Twitter. Uh, I would say Twitter, which uh, my handle is my name, Jill Rudison. Um, I also have a Facebook page, which is uh, Jill Rudison IFBB Pro. Um, so I'd say Twitter, followed by Facebook. I'm also on Instagram, so you can check me out on Instagram. I take a lot of funny random photos because that was actually my minor in college. Um, and that's, again, my name as my handle. I'm very boring. I'm like, you want to find me? Just type in my name. Real simple. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, definitely hit me up online. Okay. I will make sure to uh, put all the links uh, below this video. Okay, cool. Yeah. <laughs> Is there anything else you would like to share with uh, our viewers? Oh, um, I would say just keep an eye out for me. Um, I'm going to be competing, making my pro debut uh, very soon, April 13th in Culver City here in Los Angeles, California at the IFBB Grand Prix. I will be making my pro debut right here in my own backyard. Very excited about that. Um, and then I'll also be competing a week later in Orlando uh, on April 20th at the Europa Orlando Expo. Uh, and I will also be competing uh, about a month later in New York City at the New York Pro uh, on May 25th and then also at the Toronto Pro on May 31st. So I will be in lots of places to so check me out. Pretty busy. <laughs> yes, very busy. Lots of, uh, lots of prep. <laughs> So thank you again, uh, Jill, for your time. It was an absolute pleasure to have you on my show. Great. Thank you, ma'am. I really appreciate it. You're most welcome. My name is Miriam Kaladi, and I will see you on the next episode of Real Talk, Real Women. <laughs>